Viewer discretion is advised. Fuck the world, man. Chase your dream and fucking don't give up and don't let anyone knock you down. And you gotta put the work in. There's no shortcuts. Mandate. Welcome to Mandate, where we navigate fresh perspectives and nothing is off the table. Tonight's guest is from Tamaki Makoto, Okilani, Auckland. He's been um, in the combat sport in the fighting game for several years. He is the former New Zealand K1 champion in 2002. Also, the man is six time, six time world champion in terms of Muay Thai, but he's done it in emphatic fashion in terms of several weight divisions. From middleweight all the way to super heavyweight. The man's also uh, the owner of the leading ETK uh, kickboxing gym, elite Thai kickboxing gym. Uh, but also the man is, um, he and his wife are promoters and the founders of these amazing events called King of the Ring. But most importantly, the man is a father and also a husband. So please put your hands together for the one and only Jason, a.k.a. Psycho Sati. Thanks, Pete. You've done a little bit of homework. That's so good. I like it when you guys do some homework. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, man. Awesome. Hey, awesome. Yeah. You, you've been on the radio for, for a while now, um, Jason, and we're privileged to have you tonight. But also, I think just to start the ball rolling, if, what's, the, what's the current state of affairs in terms of you right now with ETK, um, the business, any upcoming events? Uh, obviously, your birthday coming up soon. So uh, tell us what's, what's been happening um, thus far also. Okay, okay. So, uh, yeah, I'm 50 next Monday. Um, so tomorrow um, I'm going to celebrate. Uh, so I'm, I'm 50 next Monday. Tuesday I'll go to Samoa, um, share Samoa with a few um, friends. There'll be 16 of us. Um, tomorrow I'll celebrate with a few, um, with the boys here in um, New Zealand before I go. And we'll start the day um, at 11 o'clock sparring. But my goal is to do um, 25 rounds, um, 25 two-minute rounds, um, which is 50 minutes. 50 minutes for uh, my age. I oh, mean, the most I've sparred is um, 15 rounds. Um, so it'll be a bit of a challenge tomorrow. But, I like, you know, every year I get older, I like to um, test myself, make sure that I can still roll with the young ones. Um, yeah, um, ETK, ETK is going good. Um, King the Ring, we, we're doing a new show, um, which is on the 22nd of September will be the start of it. And we're going to do, um, Arsenal Extreme. So the first round, so this is, this is great. So we've done a few super fights. I don't know if you saw the last one. So the first round, so it's, 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 uh, first round is, um, kickboxing, boxing, kicking, no knees, no elbows. Second round is Muay Thai, boxing, kicking, elbows, knees. Third round is MMA. Um, but it's all going to be with MMA gloves in a cage. So in the last two shows we've been doing, so we've doing, been doing King of the Ring, but we're doing all the super fights with X-Rules, Arsenal Extreme. Um, and Arsenal is after my one of my <laughs> brothers that died from motor neuron disease. But he used to do boxing, kickboxing, and MMA. So that's why I called him Arsenal. Wow. And so the the show's going to be Arsenal Extreme. So I can't wait. I think it's going to be awesome. I mean, the 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 super fights have been awesome, but we're just going to do a whole show. Every single fight is going to be Arsenal Extreme. Um, yeah. So I, I I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be really exciting, um, and it's it's a good it's a good brainer for the fighters. They're not fugs. They're mm -hmm. smart people to switch from this to this to this. Yeah, man. Also, because uh, I can only imagine I'm Jason because you've been in the fight game for for years, and in terms of these new up and coming fighters, what, what do you see? What, what's the difference now in terms of is it because is it technology or new fitness or new regimes? Well, what's the difference now? Because in, in your time versus these these new fighters coming up in the in the stable, what's the difference? Um, well, there is there 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 is new technology. There's new um, there's there's new advanced ways mm -hmm. of training. But hard work is hard work. If you yeah. know how to do hard work, I mean, you know, the ties are still, well, I think the ties are still staying the same. They're still doing 10Ks in the morning, 3Ks before training in the evening. Um, but I do think that, um, like, a lot of this CrossFit stuff, I think that is really good for fighters. Um, but are they fitter than the fighters 10 years ago? I don't think so. Wow. I think the way that we, um, the way that we, whatever we are doing, well, not 10 years ago, 15 years ago. <laughs> For me, 15 years ago is the last time I fought. The way that um, we fought that long ago, the way that Muhammad Ali 
trained that long ago, um, they'll they'll fit. They'll fit. There's all these different ways of um, training and, and uh, training for a fight, but um, the end result is: Are they still fighting good? I've said I've, uh, I think we're still fighting good. Um, the way Mike Tyson fought um, years ago, um, there'll be there'll be trainings that they're doing now that he wouldn't even heard of. So he wouldn't have done it, but he still performed in the ring. So I think there are new ways. Maybe there are smarter ways where you don't have to do as much um, in the sense of time. But the end result, the fighter from 10 years ago, 15 years ago, um, I, I would say myself the, as a super heavyweight kickboxer compared to a super heavyweight kickboxer now, I think I still give uh, – then – I was still giving the same goods as he's giving now. I wouldn't say that I could beat the guy today, but um, you know, if we put ourselves in the same time from 2000 and what are we 2023 training to 2002 training, I think they were still going. They're still going to have a good rumble, a good fair fight. Do you, well, do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. So yeah, there's just different ways of training now. Just just different wow. weight training but the way that we used to train then we still got in the ring and still did um three hard rounds and uh, nine hard rounds 12 hard rounds Gee, yeah. you, you know like um I, I thought i fought 12 rounds for one of my world titles when i tell people today they're like wow really i said yeah i fought a 10 rounder i fought a 12 rounder um i don't know i don't know of anyone fighting 12 rounds in kickboxing today Jeez. um so we did it we did a different style we did different style of training but we worked hard. Maybe they didn't work as long as us now and they get the same results because yeah. there's um, there's modern technology. And I don't say modern technology and equipment and that, but you just learn how to mm. get to that 100% of fitness in different ways and maybe smarter ways, shorter mm. ways. And that's just from trial and tribulation, like mm. just trialing it, trialing it. Oh, that works, that works, that doesn't. And as you go on in time, things get better and you get smarter. Just yeah, like everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. So That's true, what man. I think. Yeah, it's yeah, true. Yeah, you're right. You've been around for, um, you've been involved in combat sports for a long time. And so you've been there as a fighter and at an elite level. And also as a trainer, you've trained some of these um, up and coming fighters and fighters who have done it as well like how much have you evolved as a trainer yeah you you do you do yeah that's that's the truth um i think i've become um i've I, well i've become i've i think my my as a teacher i'm good because i learn things and there's things now and what i used to when i first came out of um when I first came out of fighting and I used to push my guys hard and I'd tell them, I said, I'll never make you do anything that I haven't done. But actually now there are things that I haven't done because mm -hmm. I think they're better, they're smarter than how I used to train. I can get you fitter in a different way with maybe a little bit less time. Still hard work, there's always hard work. You can't mm -hmm. get away from hard work. Yeah. But um, I think I've got smarter in the way that Sometimes you don't have to do these three-hour trainings. You know, I can get you to that same fitness with a hour training or, you know, just different ways. So, yeah, I have evolved. Um, there's, there's things that I've learned that I've actually learned from my corporate clients. Um, I look at them and I think, oh, well, um, I did this, I did that. And um, so there's things that I've learned from them that um, that I, 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 I didn't know then, um, that I was told it, but I never really understood it. Um, it's just the way, like, my, okay, so with my, with my corporate clients, like, you know, I, I, um, I, I sometimes go backwards, I, I, I go backwards, I stop, I don't always go forward, but sometimes, because they're really fit, and... Um, They'll just, they'll just be tagging me too much and then I just put this real scary face on, real strong guard, and then I just go forward. And then I just become the hunter, even though I'm not as fit as you. Yeah. I'm just, and then I just see their face change, their breathing change, I see them. And, you know, they always say, uh, be first, be strike first. 
I didn't know how important it was to always go forward and be the hunter because your whole brain changes. When you're getting hunted, you're in a little bit of panic. Your breathing changes because you're thinking, what the hell is he going to do to me? What the hell is he going to do to me? But when you're going forward, and, I, and I'm just, and with them, I'm just, um, I'm just bullshitting. <laughs> I'm just putting a real strong face on because I'm real tired and I'm sick of you guys tagging me so much. And I do it with my fighters too. And I just put a strong, my best, strongest face on and I just hunt. And I hunt, but I'm not even hunting. I'm just walking forward. <laughs> having, <laughs> a, <laughs> having, a, having a rest. Um, and, and, and just from this, um, um, from, from not fighting, I've learned how important it is to move forward, be a hunter and not the hunted. Mm. Um, that's little things like that. And and then, yeah, uh, uh, there's, there's just different ways of training um, that that I that I that I that I think um, yeah would have saved me some some time. And I was well, would have got to you get into a hundred percent gas, get a hundred percent fitness. I could have got there a little bit um, easier, a little bit smarter, but. It's, I mean, in the end, I still got to a hundred percent. They just do it. Found the way. Maybe, the maybe way. they do it. Maybe they can do it less and smarter these days. Um, yeah. Right, man. Um, <laughs> as you were talking, I'm reminded of the, you know, the movie and the program. Um, you know, the Karate Kid. Yeah. And the, you got two different dojos. You got um, Cobra Kai. Yeah. And you got Miyagi's gym dojo yeah. and. Um, you say something about like first strike. It reminds me of Cobra Kai. Like, who do you identify your style of training and your gym to? Cobra Kai, Miyagi, and if you work like Johnny Cobra Kai, have you evolved into a Mister Miyagi? Uh, I, I would say I've evolved into Mister Miyagi. Um, that that's my style. And you know what? I'll say you another another thing. So also, it was all about winning. It was all about winning. Win, 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 win. I used to have this um, this mantra that I would say as soon as I knew I had a fight. Sometimes it would be in one month. Sometimes it would be six weeks. Sometimes it would be two months. And I just had this um, I just had this um, hypnotherapy that I would give myself. I would look in my eyes. i say, you're going to win. It's all about winning. Win, 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 win. No pain, no pain, no pain, no pain. You can't get knocked out. Can't get... Win, 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 win. No pain, no pain, no pain. You can't get knocked out. You can't get knocked And I would just say it morning and night, morning and night. Anyway, <laughs> I heard myself saying this maybe a month ago, and I just said to them, you know what? It's not all about winning. Take the pressure off yourself. I can't believe I said it. <laughs> I can't believe I said it. I was like, and uh, I said, it's not all about winning. You just go in there, and I want you to take the win or lose out of your head and just go in there and have a really good experience. And don't, don't even think about winning or losing, just... Think about showing the best that you can, performing to the best ability that you have. Don't and if you win, it's a bonus. If you lose, it doesn't matter as long as you got to show yourself, show your moves, show your punches, show your kicks, and you had fun and you enjoyed the experience, and that's it. I was like <laughs> did, who's, who's did, this I, guy? did I just say that? What did your fighters think? And, uh Oh, they're right. Uh, it, it, you know what? It takes a whole lot of pressure, off, especially off the guy who's having his first fight. Because actually, you know, if you're putting on pressure of yourself and you're walking around thinking, oh, everyone just wants me to... Well, actually, everyone else is doing their own yeah, life. Yeah. They don't really give a shit that you're going to... Well, they do, you know, if they're your friends. But they have no pressure on you to win or lose. They actually just want to make sure that you don't get hurt. And if you come out of the fight and you're buzzing and you lost, your family's going to be happy for you yeah, too. Yeah. So I've just learned this and thought, yeah, actually, it's not all about winning or losing. You know, I mean, when you get to a title fight, okay, you want to win that fight. Then that's that. You really want to win there. You want to focus on the win. I mean, actually, you can still go into this mindset, which I never would have done. Mm. 20 years ago it's all about winning it's all about winning win 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 kill 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 I'm not, and that's how I think I've, I, if I have to kill you to win I'll kill you to win but um, I just came to this lately and I actually really believe it and you know I went to my son's um, 
hockey game last week and one of the kids in his hockey game was was probably like me he lost a game threw a stick down and it was like swearing they're only 10 uh yeah eight year, nine years old and this kid and then um, i said to my son hey don't you copy that you, don't you copy that it's not about winning or losing it's not i was like oh, it's not about winning or losing. just have fun son you know if you if you put up full energy and you and you have really and you put a lot of energy and you hit the ball a lot and then you know you're gonna enjoy the game and even if you win or lose you're still gonna enjoy the game because you've given out a lot of energy right and he's like yeah yeah and um yeah i don't know so i could say that with meaning to him yeah but i couldn't say this 15 years ago no way no way it's all about winning it's all about winning win 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 um but yeah so things have changed like that um and my 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 style was um always full aggression focused aggression focused aggression focused aggression but i've actually um now sometimes i can say well okay so let's um let's check them out let's see what they're doing um now now we can go to a brain game um but i never used to be a i never used to be like that um things have things have changed um yeah something you know um instead of um destroying them always making your mark in the first round i can even say well um let's have a look we can have a look at them we can have a look at them in the first round and we'll we'll start in the second round um, i never used to do that never ever wow. um so things have changed things have changed things have changed with my age um in king in the ring king in the ring um we used to have a, a no staying eight count um until about three or four years ago i think there was these uh i don't know there was these boxes there, there were corporate boxes and someone died um after the fight and that kind of you know i didn't know them he, he died because he had a brain ble he had a brain ble brain bleed from sparring and had it in the fight i mean that was i mean it's corporate boxing so they probably did have standing eight counts anyway but um i just see my fighters sometimes and I thought, oh, and they're, and they're, um, you know, I, I know that because there's no standing out count, standing out counts, and another two or three punches, he's going to get knocked out. And sometimes I think, oh, ref, jump in, jump in, but they can't because if he jumps in, the fight's finished because there's, uh, you know, because cause there's no standing out counts. Anyway, so, yeah, that's happened to me in the last three years. I think about their brain. I've learned a lot more about, um, the brain and brain injuries. Um, I learned a lot also from my son with cerebral palsy um, about the brain and how easy it is to damage your brain. So yeah, there's standing eight counts now in the last three or four years. Standing eight now, standing eight counts in King's Room because I worry about their brains. Mm. Good on you, man. Also, it seems like there's a lot of pro progression and a lot of evolving, um, Jason. But before then, Jason, because obviously your, your, your name is Psycho, Soko, and so all that aggression because it would have would have came from some place, um, Jason, in terms of kill, kill, kill. Because you, I've seen a lot of the reels. I watched you growing up, and I said, "Man, this guy's an absolute killer." <laughs> so what, what was going through the mind? Obviously, you're thinking, "Kill, kill, kill." What? But where did that all, all that aggression come from? Also, where did all that aggression come from? <laughs> I don't know. Um, <laughs> uh, being half caste Samoan, growing up in um, uh, in Auckland, um, we've just. Um, man um well, i don't know what, what's the word um complexes in my brain complex that that i was half white and half brown complex that um people would say get out of get out of new zealand <laughs> get out of new zealand you coconut and i'm like but i'm white <laughs> or whatever you know <laughs> or someone's calling me palangi and i'm me thinking that they're calling me palangi because they think i'm weak because but you know that's just the way someone's yeah, are so I just had a whole lot of complexes in my head. Um, yeah, maybe I was scared too. I, I, I was a, wasn't a big someone growing up. So if a someone was bigger than me and, you know, said the wrong thing to me, I thought he, that he was saying he could beat me up even though he didn't say anything like that. And then, yeah, so, so I had a lot of aggro, um, had a lot of aggro, um, 
And I can say why I love my sport so much is um, learning how to fight, learning how to learn, learning how to fight in this sport. It taught me how not to fight because I got confident and I realized, oh, yeah, you're a pretty good fighter. But you don't know that when you're just having um, playground fights and street fights. You don't know that you're a good fighter because you don't know if that guy was a good fighter, you know. Um, and then when you learn to fight and you're, you're training against someone who's been training six weeks, um, then you realize, oh, shit, you, you, you're pretty good. And then when, when, you re when you're beating someone that's trained for six weeks or two months or whatever, and then he's good in his part of the country or he's good from Australia or he's the best in the world and you beat him, then you realize, oh, yeah, you're pretty good. And then you get confidence then you get confident and then you can finally walk away from fights. That's, so That's how it went with me anyway. Yeah, it's awesome, awesome because I, I hear all the time, I'm Jason, there are a lot of trained fighters that don't go around like looking for trouble, looking for fights because they know how to, how to handle yeah. themselves. And there's a sense of confidence there but also a sense of discipline. Yeah. Like, I need to go and, and prove myself. But, but I got it to middle so because the, the, the reels that I've seen of you, of you, even the middleweight, most of the middleweight when you were younger, man, you were knocking out people left, right and centre. And these guys were from international guys coming in and, and winning bouts. Because you came from an amazing era with uh, Ray Sifu, you got um, Jason Ray Moore, all those yeah. kind of guys. Yeah, we had, a, we, had a good, we had a good crew in the gym, man. It was on fire, man. I, honestly, so that was from Balmoral. We were and we just had this whole wooden floor, no mats, no no mats, no carpet. And when it got real, you know, it'd get real in summer. We'd just get the floor would get so wet, wooden floor. But um, we just had a good crew, man. We had we had a real good crew. We were vibing. If there was ten, if there was ten titles in Auckland, none of them were owned by um, Balmoral Liga. Um, no, oh yeah, we had a good crew. Yeah. What do you attribute that success to during that time? We had a good trainer. We had a very good, mellow trainer, Lolo. Uh, good brains and, and a good group. Mm -hmm. And just just like, you know, we just had a good group of hungry fighters. Hungry, hungry fighters. Um, so because you've got a big group with a good trainer, everyone's rising real fast because everyone's training real hard and everyone's – you know you're sparring with the best, so you're um you're learning, you're learning. You you've always got someone that there's always someone in the gym above you, so he's always pushing you to go better. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, and it's amazing that era because some of these young guns who are new to the to watching the fight game, man, they don't know the history about um Balmoral Liga and mm. uh, the amount of talent that came from that pool. And you guys all like moved on became champions but also like um branching out and having your own gyms and and they became successful like etk and the, um and you know and, and uh ckb that's CKB, yeah, we're all, we're all, we're all from Lolo, Lolo, man. And like, and Ray, yeah Ray Sifu overseas yeah. and, and he's running what is it wfl um pfl pfl oh yeah, yeah. pfl, PFL. Oh, yeah. so man it's such a it's so awesome that from New Zealand from, from Auckland. little old little old Auckland little old church uh, little old hall under the church yeah Jeez. man that's so cool and like even now you guys are still contributing to um, world combat sports so well done also no, yeah, cool. thank man. you Props was... thank you and I, and I love that heart because um, your love for the game you know with um, your brainchild of um, King King of the Ring yeah you're using it as a platform to showcase our talent. And, you know, with um, K1 not coming on TV and more, and then with... That mm. is the... Honestly, that's the truth. So, um, like, I just got so many privileges from, from being on TV um, just to the wider public of New Zealand, you know, because our, our country's rugby, cricket... That's it, really? Rugby, cricket, league, okay? Yeah. Um, so you you weren't really any any anybody unless you were in in the All Blacks in the in the Kiwis or, or what, what's the cricket team called Black Black Caps. Black Caps, the Black yeah. Cat okay um, so but then the K one the, the the K you know man we're we're fighting people me and Ray were in Hong Kong beating world champs no one knew about us 
until it got put on TV. <laughs> and I used to get kind of angry that people would come up to me now when I think, you just saw that fight on TV. I've had heaps of fights <laughs> in that. It kind of made me angry yeah, yeah, yeah. at the start, yeah, you know. Yeah. And then, and then, um, and then you, then you get in. But then I just got so many privileges from being on TV, mm -hmm. and then you roll with it, and then you, um, then you embrace it. You embrace the publicity, and you're grateful that the country is appreciating you. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but it took a, it took a little bit of while, a little bit of time at first. Um, but then, um, then I, re I retired, and then um, the K1 got, got taken off TV. So my goal, honestly, my goal, because I wanted to give the gift back to these Kiwi kickboxers, I wanted to get uh, my sport back on TV. And I think it took, it was about two years. I retired and there was nothing on TV, no kickboxing on TV. And then we got um, King of the Ring on TV. Um, and then, you know, I'd get, um, I mean, there was no social media when I was around, but I'd get young guys going, oh man, they'd come to me next day. Or they even before the fight, oh, my, I just got a hundred more followers on my, you know, like, or I went to the bar after the fights and the guy goes to me, oh yeah, I saw you on TV, you can read, your drink's free. And I was like, yeah, man, that's, that's what I did it yeah. for. You, you know, because that's what happened to me. Mm. Like, um, people would give me a free drink, a free food, or let me to the front of the line. It was a, it was a privilege that I'm really grateful for. Um, and it's because we worked our asses yeah, off. Yeah. We risked our lives. We jumped in the ring, and you know, and and you know, people say, "Risk your life." I say, "Yeah, it's risking your life." Mm -hmm. I didn't know this when I was fighting, but if you die in the ring, do you think that guy's going to go to jail? No, he's not, yeah, because yeah. we we agreed on it. We agreed to jump in there, so it is, it is a fight to the death, mm -hmm. maybe. Yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it 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 is it is. It's a good feeling to be um, to be appreciated by by the public, um, and that, that's what I used to love about Demand Japan. They love fighters, they love fighters. Um, man, I've I've had a I've had a guy bow to me in the street on I mean bow down on the ground in the in this busy as um, crossing, um, and I mean that was a that was a privilege. I had people um, wait twelve hours till I checked out of my hotel the next day after the fight to get my autograph. That wow. makes you feel good. Yeah, that yeah, makes you yeah. feel really good, man. That's a nice, humble feeling. Yeah. Especially in a culture like that, that where that type of um, yeah. adoration is reserved for like high honor. It's a dogizaka. It's the, it's the highest, nice. um, uh, it's the highest, um, it's the highest form of um, uh, respect you can give mm. to someone bowing down and putting your um, head on forehead on the ground. It's pretty he must yeah. have been drunk, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy. For twelve hours, for twelve hours. Yeah. <laughs> but I did oh, I went down straight away and I and I knew someone told me someone told me it's called a doggy zaka. Um, I, someone told me where I was and I just went down and grabbed him. It was fucking cool, man. Jeez. That's cool. But it's, it's sad though, you, you really think about it, Jason, like you like obviously people think of the All Blacks and all these other um, sports and, and celebrities and sports, but you guys, you, you're right. There was hardly anything in terms of acknowledging the the K1 fighters, uh, and yeah. you, you do you guys train your asses off, you go over international, and you're doing you're winning all these belts, and you come back and like, hey man, not even yeah. knows what's going on in here, man. Yeah. Do you think that's a New Zealand thing, and has anything changed? Oh yeah, I think it's changed. Look at look at look. Look what they look at the publicity they're giving to the UFC fighters. Even New Zealand TV is giving it to them. I think it has changed, yeah. I've, and I'm so grateful to to Dan Hooker, to Israel, you know, to all to all those to Shane Young, to all those UFC fighters because they're working their asses off, and now they're getting they're getting on TV in New Zealand, and and the the Kiwi public gets to see that. Mm. Fighters are making a living from fighting, um, which which is really good. And, uh, and I don't know, maybe they didn't give us that much respect because we didn't make as much money as them. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I'm I'm wrapped to see it happening now. It's it's awesome. And yeah. the cool thing about it is that a lot of these fighters, um, their first platform was would have been through King of the Ring King as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's um, like to. To make or become a king of, the, to fight in king of the ring and to be a champ, 
was knew that you're up and coming for the world stage yeah yeah no and and they and you know what and um and they're very uh, and they they're cool they 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 i mean they're way surpassed us but um dan izzy they're very grateful to us and they um and they uh, they show their appreciation they don't forget us which is which is they're kiwi cool. style yeah, yeah. which is kiwi yeah. style you know um yeah I'm, I'm very proud i'm very proud of them um very grateful that they remember us that they're on our show but um yeah man they're, they're doing it that's so cool man yeah. but kudos to you um jason for, for bringing this up for bringing it to, to reality in terms of king of the ring and you and your wife getting us up up and running because you're right you, these guys wouldn't have had that platform and you look at the the fighters now there's, some, there's something about it. tell maybe you can tell us what is it about kiwis that are, are excelling in, in the fight game right now ufc mixed martial arts all that kind of stuff what is it about new zealand that's um that's quite special in terms of the fight game what is special well well one that um we're a real small country right with when They've got way more variety um, to pick from than us. Mm. Um, CKB, little Auckland Kiwi gym, is named uh, the, 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 the top gym in the world mm. at the moment. Um, but what I think is special is, you, you know, if you've got a million, if you've got a million, if you've got 10 people to pick from and a thousand people to pick from, you're going you're gonna to find the champs in the thousand, shouldn't you? Because mm. you've got more of a chance of finding that champ. But actually, they're right here. Mm. But what I think about New Zealand is, you know, that we're we're a pretty staunch country, man. <laughs> we like to fight. <laughs> yeah, yeah man, everyone's had a everyone's had a fight in the school. <laughs> everyone's had a fight or had a hiding. Like we're, this is a staunch country. I remember, um, I remember like going to Australia, and I, and I, I remember you know hear about all the stabbings and shooting, and I think, don't fuck with anyone here, man. They're gonna stab us or shoot us. You go to New Zealand, yeah, fuck with anyone because you're just going to have a fight. <laughs> you're just going to fight. And at worst, he's going to go home and get his big brother and come back, you, <laughs> you, you know? Like, you, you, there's there's no fear of, um, I don't know, unfortunately it's changing. Mm. But when I was growing up, when I was in my 20s, mate, <laughs> yeah, the worst that's going to happen is you're going to get a hiding from two or three or four people. But you ain't ever, you never had to worry about getting stabbed or shot mm. or dead because you just for me it's just like it's just a fight it's just a fight you're gonna get maybe you're gonna maybe it's gonna be 10 people maybe there's mm. gonna be two people but there's a good chance it's just gonna be with well, the first part it's just gonna be you one-on-one -on -one. and there was no fear of anything else mm. um unfortunately that's changing but i think we've got a strong man we're fighters we're fighters. We're fight. It doesn't matter you white, black, Samoan, Tongan, Maori. If you're in, if you're in New Zealand, if you're a Kiwi, you're a, you got a little bit of fight in you. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what I think. Don't you think? Yeah, yeah, yeah man. Yeah, I think we're resilient was... too, because yeah. man, well, our first um, combat training was stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mum and dad. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So your re reflexes are real yeah, fast. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> And then by the time you go have a fight with someone, you've already had because you're yeah, the yeah, hiding from it. home. Hiding is like, <laughs> you oh. you're conditioned. You're conditioned. <laughs> <laughs> but cool. Like, I like the story about you because man, a, you know, a lot of um, people us, like us, we grew up always wanted to um, be the the who's the strongest in the school, <laughs> the yeah. toughest, and who's the toughest, <laughs> and you shared us about a story how you went. <laughs> Um, got a scholarship to th Thailand to learn how to fight or yeah. to come back home to fight that was kids. my that was my uh, yeah you know I can tell this story because I didn't come back and keep fighting the street but yeah okay. my, my, my first yeah okay so we used to have a few fights you know we'd go to Mount but Grandma and break into their social and have a few fights you know have like just you know at school school rumbles but then I heard that there were these um, kickboxers and they were having some street fights too. And I thought, oh shit, you know, I had a look at this. Okay, yeah, ooh, if I, if I meet those guys, they might give me a hiding. So, okay, but I was smart. So I applied for this um, scholarship, went through these interviews, 
you know what I mean? My parents, my parents were so happy. They were, they were paying for, they were just paying for me to go and learn how to fight. But I, um, yeah, so I got, I went, I went to Thailand, but in my brain, in my honest brain, because I was smart, I was just going to learn from the motherland. So if I meet those street fighters that were doing kickboxing, I'm going to be better than them because I'm gone, I've gone to Thailand to learn it. But then I came, I had a fight there, came back, had a fight there, and everything changed, man. My life changed, and I think if I didn't start fighting in the ring and I just came back for a street fighter, I probably would have ended up in jail mm -hmm. for um, murder. Oh, wow. That was pretty confident that I, that I killed. So, <laughs> oh, I, I would have been in jail for fighting. I would I would have been in jail for fighting, but I um, but it just changed my life, and that's why I have so much love for it, and th and that's why I love to share this sport because it saved my life, man. Wow. Uh, so what do you know? What was it that made you change? Um, the the glory and the high of winning in the ring was way. Way more than winning in the street. In the street, nothing is gone just like that because actually, you don't know if he was a good fighter anyway. There's no, there's no glory. Um, so I, I like the glory. It was just man, and and um, and it's scary um, having a planned fight. You know, having an aggro fight in the street is just like that. It happens just like that. There's no prep build up. There's no mental game. But preparing to fight someone in the ring and knowing that he's preparing, I I think it's the, I think it's one of the biggest human challenges you'll ever come across, having a one to one fight in the ring. I think it, I uh, you know, I think it's um one of the biggest achievements that you can do as a human being, um, knowing that for six weeks we have planned. We have, okay, we're going to fight in six weeks. You know, it's not like that. You don't point at him and say, <laughs> you know, through the trainer, yeah. And then you're training for six weeks. Well, and you know that he's training for six weeks. Is he training harder than me? What training is he doing? You know, and you don't know what he's doing, but you know that he's going to come and he's going to bring, because he's had six weeks to prepare. So I just, I just love it. I just think it's um, the biggest human challenge physically and mentally you can ever do and you're like, I don't know is it what else is there what else is bigger than um, a one-on-one -on -one fight in the ring um, a one-on-one a, a, a -on -one competition in the ring well really it's a fight in the ring mm -hmm. and if he kills you is he gonna go to jail no he ain't gonna go to jail because you both agreed there and it's on legal it's on paper yeah. um, so I just think really when it comes down to it and I have so much admiration for anyone that does it because it's massive it's massive it's physically and mentally um such a big challenge Jeez. that's so true that's so, that's so good. crazy man so, so which one out of all those fights um jason because you've won several titles which one for you was the most memorable for the greatest achievement in, in the ring uh, okay greatest achievement would be um my 12 rounder with um Trevor Ambrose, there was a 12 round kickboxing fight. Uh, uh, yeah, and uh, 12 rounds, that was awesome. That was big. And um, winning the K1, winning, winning three fights in one night, there's nothing compared to <laughs> winning three fights in one night because you fight one fight and you know, it looks like you don't, you don't feel anything. As soon as the bell goes on the last round, boom, I feel all my pain. I feel everything that I, that I, that I just did. But then when you got to do it again, this is this is a challenge, man. And then you got to do it again. And these injuries usually last between a week to six weeks. But you're fighting again in 15 minutes, and then you're fighting again in another 20 minutes. So my one of my biggest achievement was um, win, winning the K1. Was that, was that the fight with um, Doug Viney right the final? Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm my, best friend, my best friend, my best friend. your best friend? Oh, yeah. wow. Bro, I've, been watching, I've been trying to look for that, that reel of, of you guys' fight, but there's nothing in, on YouTube. Because I remember watching that fight live uh, when you and Doug Viney. Yeah. So, yeah, that was, a, that was an incredible win, Mom, also. We were, we were like, we were tight that time. We were, <laughs> we were trained together and we were hanging out. Like, we were, you know, our free time was together. I actually cooked them dinner 
um, after the win, which was the night bef night before, I was I was older than him, so um, yeah. What did you put in the stick? Yeah. <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> Don't say that. Some, man, you two must have some crazy stories together. I'm, I'm sure some. I'm sure someone um, have said that too. But um, yeah, but we 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 were we were, um, we were, we were tired as, and we're still really tired. Mm. Me and Doug, like. Um, like he's one of my he's one of those friends that you don't see for seven years or whatever and then you hang out and then you're just things the same you're yeah. just yeah <laughs> you can be stupid you can be silly yeah yeah mm -hmm. oh that's awesome shit actually i'm gonna i gotta text him and invite him tomorrow actually for <laughs> he'll, come, he'll probably come and give me a hiding yeah come and revenge me yeah oh share about the oh no you did share about it. what you're gonna do tomorrow that's crazy man there's something about you yeah, how your mind ticks like you're always um yeah. looking for you love these challenges um you see it in the way um in your in the fight game even before the fight game coming back your whole fight game um you started at super uh, at middleweight no i started way, at middleweight. middleweight i started my first fight was 72 kilograms <laughs> 72 kilograms man um, but man, I was glad when I was to go up weight. <laughs> what were, what was the weight that you're more comfortable in? I think I would have it would have been um, between eighty six to um, heavyweight ninety five because then there was a weight there was a cut cut off. Like I remember when I went to I went to super heavyweight. It wasn't the weight, but it's super heavyweight. You know when you don't have when they're allowed to be open weight they're really tall it was um the height it was reach that was um that was a little bit hard for me to start with um it wasn't the weight but it was you know when when you when you got when you got someone that you don't have a weight limit on them fuck they're tall <laughs> yeah. they're they're tall and they're heavy um yeah so it was, it was yeah so super heavy it was hard it took a little bit of time getting used to um but i think um if there was if it, if it's ninety five or eighty six, uh, I would I would have been unbeatable. Um, and 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 that's why, you when we did King in the Ring, oh. I do I do weights so that everyone can share the limelight and um, you can be king in your weight and you don't have to be like me that I had to chase super heavyweight because that was where the glory was and that was where the money was. Um, so you know so we do a ten thousand dollar prize but we do the prize for whatever weight we're doing that's cool mm. and in terms of like moving weight was that by choice was that because of the challenge or was it because no one wanted to fight you it was because um yeah because no one would fight me in those weights and then at, at the start so my first world title was 76 then 78 then 79 and I just thought, oh, once I get a world title, everyone will challenge me. But um, they didn't. And then the K1 came out and there was money, you know. there was It was $10,000 in New Zealand, $30,000 in Australia, a million dollars in Japan. So I chased the money. So I, I, I chased the money to um, – so then I became super heavyweight. And my goal was to fight in the Grand Prix to fight for that million dollars. I chased it for probably my last five years of my career – I never made it. I never made it, but I had a good time and a good life mm. and a good, healthy life chasing that dream. For five years, I chased that dream, maybe more. Um, I didn't get it, but I chased it and I had a bloody good time and a good lifestyle trying to get there. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, that's just excuses to show you. I'm Jason. Like, people think, oh, you, this is the, the, the specific goal, this is the focus is here, you achieve it. But you're right. I think. People forget about the, the the journey, the journey in terms of achieving that goal. And if even if you don't achieve that goal, there's a lot of learnings. There's a lot of yeah. things you can you can get from that, gain from that. Absolutely, yeah, man. That's awesome. Also, that's awesome. But in terms of um, obviously we talk about the fighting, but you talked about being half Samoan, and half Balangi, and I always used to um, admire you because of your tatau. What what what, what 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 made you kind of get the tatau? What's the story behind that? And is well, there something significant about that? That was that you know like. Um, so I, you know, in in Samoa, I'm telling them um, I'm a half Kiwi, I'm a half Kiwi, half Samoan, you know, because I want them to know my dad. I'm proud of my dad. 
I want them to know about New Zealand. Well, when you're in the world limelight, in, in, in the in the world in the world stage of the world stage, so I just thought, yeah, I really want to show my little country off because Samoa's little. Everyone knows New Zealand, but no one knows Samoa. So I wanted to get my best. So I asked a few people, um, and they were like, um, they're like, no, don't do it. You have to wait till you stop fighting. It's going to take your um, energy out of you. You won't be able to fight. But I thought, yeah, but you know, when I finish fighting, then what about you know? I want people to ask. What's that tattoo? I want the rest of the world to ask, what's that tattoo? So I had to do it. So against a lot of elders, actually, I went against their word, and I went and got the better, and I fought. And I fought, man, after I got it, I fought a boxing fight five months later, but I just, uh, a year I was back in the kickboxing ring. But I wanted to, the reason I did it was to show the rest of the world that a little country, Samoa, is on top of the world. And that's the truth. Mm. Man. And you see it now, you see the pattern now, you got Bam Bam, Tuivasa. Yeah, man. Justin Tuffer. Oh, I'm so proud. proud. Oh, I'm yeah. so proud. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when they're on Insta, I always, yeah, yeah, nice one, nice I always back them, man. And, yeah. that, and now, and you know there's someone because yeah, they got yeah. the better, you know. Uh, I'm very proud of them. That's awesome, man. And you got Tyson Pedro as well. So, yeah, yeah man, you kind of paved, kind of paved the way. Well, I don't know, maybe you could have, could have inspired them. Obviously, they would have the same kind of sense of, yeah, I want to put someone on the map. I think of Bamba because Bamba people think, oh, because he's but Aboriginal man. Was I mean, how come he's always carrying the Aboriginal flag? Yeah. But like what Bamba says, he said, hey, no, I, I don't need to keep carrying the Samoan flag because Samoa's on, on, yes. on me. Yes, yes. So he's very, very proud. And man, kudos, man, because it is because it makes us proud. I remember my father watching you. Who is this? Oh, Samoa, Samoa, Samoa. Why did he come with it? Why did he come with it? Jason Sutton, he's a fan, but they were so proud. And, absolutely, and you know, I had a lot of. I guess you get a lot of. Oh, I love them. You know, like. Would they would they watch kickboxing? Maybe not. Maybe, but when they see a pair on TV, they watch it, eh? And that's a long and that's a long that's yeah. fifteen twenty years ago. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you know that 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 our parents would only watch boxing, really. You, yeah, you know, true. but then they see this Samoan guy kicking. Oh, would the, they see the pair? Then they they're watching, you know. Yeah. And, and I got their support. And you know, every Psalm one house would be like, oh yeah, come on, Mako, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Kassu, no, Kassu. Yeah. Uh, uh, um, but, you know, uh, I'll go, I want to go back because we didn't touch on it much. So, you know, how I say, um, I chased, I chased the Grand Prix. I chased it for five or seven years and I failed. And it's not a bad thing to say I failed. And I do say it to people. I do say it. I do share it and I feel a little bit embarrassed, but you know what? There's nothing to be embarrassed about because I tried my mm, ass off. Yeah. I never gave up in a fight. I never gave up in a fight and I chased that dream and it's good to know and I, and I share it and I share that I failed because I chased it. I never gave up. I never gave up and it was a good, it was a good life and I got publicity mm. and I got some fame on the way. I never made it to the end, but everyone still respects me because they never saw me give yeah. up. Yeah. Um, so uh, it's a. I think it's a good thing to share, oh, and, yeah. I, and, I, and I share, awesome. and I share it with, um, and I share it so that people know if you got a dream, Chase yeah, it. go for it, man, go for it. Just don't give up. And like me, yeah, I never made it. I got my age got to me first, and my neck got to me. But um, yeah, it was a good. I had, a, I had a good time, and I had a good, healthy lifestyle chasing that dream. Man, I'm glad. I'm glad you said that, I'm Jason, yeah, because sure, you're sure. right, man. You're absolutely right. In the midst of all the failures, there were other successes. Yeah. Other, look at the great things you're doing now, man. That's yeah. a, I think even now, but that's probably even more so in terms of the achievement, in terms of the Tokyo Dome and K1. The things you've done now, like man, it's it's man, great success, man. Also, well done. And I, I think like in the sense. Even though you didn't reach that goal, like it wasn't for us, man. It was a success. Like yeah. seeing a Samoan, um, a Kiwi on on the world stage. Um, you're a part of a group that were pioneers um, for putting um, fighters on, you know, on the platform, and even what you're doing now. So, um, a lot of these youngsters that are fighting now, they were looking up to you guys and. 
And so there was no failure. No. And, you, yeah. and if you did, it was like fate. You you knew how to fail forward. Like Yeah, yeah. no, nah, thank you. I like that. Yeah. Thank you, yeah. And I, I just wanted to... Um, yeah, I just thought it good to um, yeah, no, to, to, good. To, to go yeah. back and talk about it, um, and and I think you know, and I, I do feel a kind of a little bit embarrassed when I say it, and maybe you two went off on that, but I thought no, let's talk about it yeah, because I want because um, yeah. I want other people to mm. have a goal and and chase it, yeah. chase it, and don't give up, don't give up, and. Yeah, I didn't get there, but look at me. I'm all right. Yeah, man. I'm all right, and I, and I still get to to share my knowledge, and and I still get to put some fighters on TV, put and and how I'm getting to help them with their dream. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think the the lesson for us is the worst thing you can do is not try. Yep, hundred percent. Like you have all these dreams, but you're just sitting there. Yeah, you're someone that actioned yep. stuff that you loved and and the dreams, and so man, I. Because, you know, for us, a big, a big part of our podcast is, like, really um, normalising some of these conversations, but really um, pushing our men to chase um, mm. dreams beyond their circumstances, even if it's just getting off the chair, um, applying for stuff that, yeah. you know, a lot of our men are disabled, and, and even our young ones that are there, like, we know what it's like growing yeah. up. And these are the two pathways. You're going down one pathway, trying to hustle your way out of the hood, or you um, you have these signposts that put you into the right direction, yep. and you're definitely one of them also. Uh, cool, thank you. Yeah, and I, man, I, and, I you know, I love that mindset. Like, even though that was one season and one chapter that was closed, it didn't take you long to start something else. To And, and even... Man, you're you're doing heaps of different stuff like your fitness trainer, fight trainer, <laughs> event promoter, uh, corporate group training, public speaking, and I don't know if so I'm saying it right. Wim Hof method, yeah, the Wim Hof he's, method. He's, he's, yeah. he's an instructor. He's a he's certified yeah. man. And I, yeah, um, yeah, that was that was, that that's a good buzz that I jumped on. Um, it it was like um, you know, like kickboxing. You can share with with. Not everyone, but I but I found this this thing, the Wim Hof method that I can share with everyone from all walks of life, old, young, um, male, female, um, and it really works. It really does um, make you healthier. Um, so it's this one, this one that I share with people. This is one of my good things I'm putting in the world because I really believe in it. And I know if you do it like I do it, um, like I've been living it for five years now, your life is going to improve um, mentally and physically. Um, it, it's it, it's it's a good thing that I'm putting in the world, and it makes me feel good. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, what was it, um, Jason? What kind of um, pricked your interest to do the Wim Hof and? <laughs> And then it's and then, then decided, hey, you know what? I should be the, a method instructor. I should I should learn this. Well, okay. So to be honest, um, I just like mental. I like I like <laughs> it. I like the mental the mental game of the ring. Okay. So people say, do you miss the ring? Do you miss the ring? I don't miss the ring so much. The all the training and and you know even when you win, sometimes it hurts for three or four weeks, six weeks even, even though you just won. I don't miss that, to be honest. <laughs> but what I miss is the power of my mind. Once someone told me I was fighting, whoever was in front of me in the ring, my brain was unbreakable. It was, I miss that. I miss the switch that just used to come and you, you really going to have to inject me or kill me to stop me fighting. I miss that. Uh, I missed that, and so so now I'm going to the back to the Wim Hof. As I just saw this old white guy Wim Hof, and he was swimming in these glaciers, and I thought, "Fuck, he's tough. Look at that, <laughs> look at that old white man. He's fucking tough." <laughs> and so I said to the, I, I was getting tattooed, and I said to the guy, "Fuck, what do you have to do?" He goes, "Yeah, oh, you got to do like a two minute cold shower." I was like, oh, "Okay." It was freezing. It was July. Jumped in, cold shower, all freezing, jumped out 20 seconds, 30 seconds. And he said two minutes, so I did three minutes. So in three days, I was up to three minutes. 
And then I was doing streaming. Then I went back to my gym. I said, hey, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> don't use the cold. Don't use the warm shower in my gym. You want to you wanna have a shower, do cold shower. I don't even have to be in your corner. You can make your own self strong. You can self your, make yourself. Honestly, I used to go and check the showers. <laughs> Check, check if they be if they have the no, I check the door and I know I know some of them they had a hot shower because it was steaming there, but they turned the water too cold. I just said, man, this is awesome. Like, I, you can make your own, you can make your brain strong just by getting in it, you know. And I told them the goal after, but honestly, I went straight back to my gym, told all my fighters, no, I'm not to have hot showers, only cold, cold. I just thought this is a real easy way to strengthen your brain with no injuries. Anyway, then I started Googling him. Oh, yeah, Wim Hof. Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. He's pretty amazing. He's done like hour 53 in the ice. He's got the world record, world Guinness Book of Records um, ice. And then um, he had these courses, um, 10 new weeks online. I did that one. Then I did another one. And then um, I was, I, I was, uh, I'd, I'd been accepted to do the advance, which was in Holland. There's a little bit of money in that. Nah, so I didn't do that. Anyway, he was doing a, um, Wim Hof was doing a, a he did a workshop in um, Australia. So I went, I flew over with about four or five guys from the gym. We did it. Boom, he, 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 you know, he blows you away. He's amazing. Anyway, there was a scientist there that was, that didn't really believe in the method at first. <laughs> And he just started saying, this is what happens to you, red blood cells, white blood cells, just telling us all the, everything that happens scientifically to your body. And I was like, fuck, that's amazing. Okay, for my gym, I always think for my gym, for my family. I got a front, I just jumped on my phone, I'm trying to join, trying to join what I'd been accepted for the year before. No, sorry, no, Jason, no, it's full, it's full. So the advanced course was full. I went home every day, every day I had three emails, emailing them, oh, please, please, I'm the biggest follower, I'm the biggest follower in New Zealand, my whole gym's doing it. No, sorry, no, we're adamant, no, no, no. On the seventh day, okay, Jason, we've opened a spot up for you, you can join. Boom, boom, went, went, went to Holland, then I went to Poland. Um, yeah, man, and just became instructor because this, this is real. It's so simple. Just changing the way you breathe for a little bit, charging yourself, jumping in the ice, so simple and it's free. It, it's actually free. You just, well, you, you got to pay me one time. You got to pay me one time. But from here on, from here on forward, you can do it by yourself at home. Just cold Jeez. water and just change the way you breathe for a little bit. So cause what does it do? I'm just, it just regulates the breathing or was just... So the breathing is like this hyper hyperventilating breathing that you do um, two minutes, exhale, hold your breath. So what, what happens in, so why, so what happens with the breathing? It balances your pH. All your organs need a balanced pH um, to work at their best, okay? Um, but most of us, 80% of the world is acidic. So you can you can balance your pH in ten minutes of this breathing, and it lasts for about four hours. In the ice, in the ice. So the main thing why they say ah, you know, the cold, my warm friend, boosts your immune system. So when you jump in the ice for two minutes, go below eighteen degrees Celsius, which is not that which is not that cold, seventeen degrees. I, I, my my ice bath is about zero point five to four degrees, so it's cold. But for that two minutes. Your body freaks out, doesn't know what's happening, thinks there's a foreign disease in its body, so it sends out all these white blood cells. White blood cells are your fighting disease cells. So it sends out these for six days after that one two-minute ice bath. Wow. So you only really got to do it once a day, once a week, um, to get that extra protection for six days. Um, so, it's balance, so the main things that I can say, balances your pH, so you, your organs work better, so your brain works better, resets your hormonal system, like all your hormones fire, um, and the white blood cells um, boosts your immune systems. And, you know, when for fighters, your immune system gets smashed because you're training so many so, so much, you're training twice a day. 
So it's really easy to get sick when you're getting really fit to a fight. You jump in the ice once a week, you got these extra white blood cells that are that are counteracting that smashing of the immune system because you're training so much. So for me, as a fighter, for my fighters, it's easy. It's mm. simple. It's simple. And then inf- everyone knows inflammation. You got got a sore body, sore bruise. Mm. So there's so many stones. Mm. Um, there's so many birds that are killed with this one stone i just think so it's amazing good. it's oh. it's an extra hack for um fighters wow and then if you guys want to know more you got to pay for the rest of the god to jason Sadi's page yeah man book your courses for not just fighters aid anyone you a- recommend a- it for a- anyone man cool. anyone I, I have everyone there That's me. um there's not enough fighters there to be honest hmm. uh, if i was a fighter i'll be jumping in to <laughs> learn this hack man um yeah I think the one thing that Pete really wanted to ask is how will it improve his breathing in the bedroom? <laughs> <laughs> will it make him go an extra bit longer? Is he talking uh, with the hormones? <laughs> maybe, 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 maybe. Maybe. <laughs> well, well, um, I, well, you, you, you know, you'll have a balanced pH, so um, all your organs will be working at the optimum. So, nice. yeah, I'd, I'd say so. Full, full got to pay for the rest. Got to pay for the full cylinders. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. Right, man, that's awesome. It is. Uh, you know, we, we obviously we talked about um, you, you, the fight and in the ring, and you've you, you, all your accolades and um, a lot of the goals that you've done. Because you know you, you're busy. You're a very busy man, very entrepreneurial business. Um, but also, just, I just wanted to touch base on some of the what's been some of the most difficult times, um, Jason, in terms of. Uh, and when I say t- difficult, I talk about outside of the ring. Uh, what are some of the, some of the things that make just just kind of got you like man? Right now, this is just hard. Ooh. What are, well, yeah, what have been some of those um, those those times where you felt like, man, this is this, I'm not in a good space. Um, oh because man, of, yeah, because of, could, could be because of anything or or, or things that un- unexpectedly or, or because of other. My things. son, yeah, well, I don't even know. I want to talk about that too. Oh, my son, so my son, um, we did everything right. Me and my wife, it was our. Um, it, it, so. Uh, my, my my wife now she's brought up um, my first daughter um, from a previous mar- marriage, um, and she's she's brought her up since she's one. So um, our daughter calls mum mum, and she calls her blood mum by her maiden name because um, that's um, how close she is to um, my wife and her real mum. Because they, you know, she spent so much time with my blood run. Anyway, so we done everything right. We done everything right. Health foods, everything like everything under the sun to have our first child, and then our first child, um, our, our first child got um, got brain damage, fully brain damage. So that was the, the that was that was hard. That was really hard. That 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 fucking. That hit me down hard, and I remember um, we done we were in hospital for two weeks, done all these tests, did a lumbar punch so many times. I don't know if you know lumbar punch. It's in the, it's in the back. It hurts the baby. Mm-hmm. Done all these blood tests, and um, nothing. They didn't know what was wrong with him. And the last day, tomorrow they were gonna do an MRI, which was the brain, and because they'd done everything physical. I just fucking had this feeling something, something, something's something's wrong with his brain. I prayed, I prayed, I prayed, I prayed to God, I prayed to God, please let him, please let my son be okay, please let my son be okay. Take me tonight, run me over, kill me, but let my son be okay. Um, and then we went, and they they took us to the room, and uh, and the doctor said there was a, we were in the room, me and my wife were like. Um, Ten doctors and they um, they said he's got brain damage over all parts of his brain. Um, how um, at some stage in inside the room um, he didn't get oxygen into his brain. That was hard. Yeah, that that was that was fucking hard. Um, you know, like I would have been happy if God did take me and and let him let him come normal just so he could be. Um, enjoy life like every other child. He did nothing to the world. Why did why did why did why did this happen? Um, but um, he's a pleasure. He's an absolute pleasure, my son. I love having my son. Wouldn't have it any other way. That's the way. That's the way they gave him to us. Um, and he's fucking beautiful. 
Um, he's taught us a lot. He's taught me a lot of patience. Um, yeah, uh, I've learned a lot from him. I've learned, learned a lot of different things in life that I wouldn't have learned without him. Um, and I think a whole lot of our community has learned a lot because our community is awesome. We've done massive fundraisers for him. Um, so I think a whole lot of it, it has opened up the kickboxing community to CP as well with my son. Um, yeah, yep, yeah, that's probably the yeah, that's probably the hardest thing I've ever come across. I think. Um, what else has been happening, man? Fucking death, death. So many death has been happening. You know, miss one of my best friends, well, two of my best friends now, um, Patty, uh, another mate, Jaime, my older brother, my mum. I don't know, fucking hell, is it just my age? But, you know, I remember um, the first, it was first, it would have been, it was my brother, it was my mum, and, I, and I, you know, after like the third person really close to me, and they break you, it breaks you, it breaks you. You're just happy to, you just want to stay at home. You don't want to go out in public, but you have to. Um, but then I just, uh, after a while, I just started saying, everyone's gonna die. I'd say it out loud. I do like a, like I used to do my fight hypnotherapy. Then I just do it to myself. Everyone's gonna die. Everyone's gonna die. Everyone's gonna die one day. Just to prepare myself because it really hit me hard. First couple of times, there were people that were close to me, my 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 brother, my mum, Patty, and um, they were pretty heavy. Um, yeah, I've, uh, I think it maybe after I can't remember was it my my mum or Patty? I just started. I, I just just one day I just started saying, "Everyone's gonna die. Everyone's gonna, just to prepare myself yeah. for the next person." Um, and everyone is gonna die. Um, yeah, so that so those have been hard, and you know, um, I got so used to um, dealing with funerals and what you do. Um, yeah, um, I even um, emceed. Um, I emceed one of my best friends' um, funeral, and that was a bit of shock. But because I've been around in the last five years, I've been to so many funerals. Um, I did a good job. Or I've just been so so used to being there. It's not a good thing, but it's it's life, eh? Yeah. We're all gonna die one day. At least I now I know. I mean, you know when you grow up, you know. But fuck, it's a shock when it's it happens. Just to prepare for it. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for sharing yeah, that. Shows, shows. Sorry for the losses and yeah. yeah. Um, what else can I say? Is there, is, there an, is there an easier thing that I can talk about? That was like, nah, nah, nah. Uh, shit. Shut up, shut up, shut up. Shut up. Yeah. I um, think because, man, you know, life throws us so many challenges, and for a lot of men, when we're faced with these challenges and we go through our rock bottom experiences, you can either end up staying down and letting a lot of these stuff like swallow you up and that's why hey we see a lot of like men um not recover well and then you see others that really through the through time and through the journey they're able to sort of pick themselves back up and i think hearing a story like yours also even though it's that it's really hard to share um it really encourages others that man there is a way through it and, and the way you process it uh, everyone processes things differently but at least um, we're hearing a different side to how to process some of these griefs and mm. so yeah and you know man honestly shit time heals that really does eh? time heals man just hang in there man hang in there time heals you just need time, just time. It just, it it does ease things. Um, the longer you go through it, um, the further it slips away. Mm. And also, yeah, I appreciate that also. You know, I think what, 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 like uh, what Charles was saying, um, Jason, you know, it's not easy sometimes for us as men to like even kind of share that stuff, but for you to even share it also, 
Thank you very much um, for kind of opening and giving us that kind of a, uh, you know, that that talano, that that glimpse of hey, it, yeah, shit happens. It, it, it's it's hard, man. It's hard, and I know Butty because Butty, I, I went to school with Butty. Um, yeah, last so same year as well. Yeah, really. So, yeah. yeah, what a dude. What a dude. Yeah, man. I'm so sorry, man. Rest in peace uh, to the also, and to your your brother's mom and um. But, bro, um, I, I you know it resonates with, with obviously with your son. I, I I totally understand, bro. My my daughter was born with Down syndrome. Yeah, and so the same thing, bro. I was like, man, God, come on, man. Yeah. God, I prayed and can't believe it. So, also, yeah, my heart, my heart goes out. But I've, I've seen the photos of your son, and his name's Phoenix, right? Phoenix, yeah, yeah. And you you know, like, okay, so the phoenix is a mythological bird that um, every now and then it um, it uh, it dies, it burns. It burns, and then uh, well, I didn't know this. I didn't even know this um, until after it was born. It burns, and then it um, it rises again from the ashes, and the bird comes up again. So with our children, we always have a name. We have a name for like seven, eight months before they're born. With Phoenix, we just change his name. I can't remember what we we're going to call him. We change his name about a month before he was born to Phoenix. So what I'm saying there is something as good is going to happen. Something good is going to happen because that name is he's going to rise from the ashes. And we just changed his name a month. We had it for like seven oh. months or something. Oh. And we changed the name. So something's coming. Something's mm. coming with my son. Yeah, man. Yeah. You're a good looking boy, man. Good looking boy, man. Um, and you're right. The phoenix is the rising up from the ashes. Yeah. The firebird. But man. Your Pete's son's name is Yeah, my, uh, my son's phoenix name is Phoenix. Well. Really? Well, yeah, Me. Bro. <laughs> Me. Yeah, bro, yeah. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. Nice one. And I love, like, um, I will keep your son in prayer as well. Um, I love how, like, even though, like, you share the story, man. God, take me. Yeah. yeah but it's almost like hearing about, you know, what the gift that your son has been to you in terms mm. of changing um, your perspective of um, being empathetic with people and yeah. giving an insight into life and just hearing, like, just your journey, it's like, Man, he's been a gift, and mm. and we just pray that, because um, you know, man, we always say this to our guests. We always have this. We feel like we end up having this connection with them. So we, um, like behind the scenes, man, we're always thinking about our guests and their families, and then we'll keep you guys in prayer. And so, thank you for sharing, giving us a little insight. Also, thanks. And, and you know, I just I, 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 so while I've got the chance. I want to say to motherfuckers, don't park in the handicapped car park. <laughs> yeah, you tell me. You know, honestly, 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 sometimes I have to control my tempo. I think, is it going to be worth it? Should you say something? Oh, shit. I mean, if I don't have my son in the car and I've got the thing, I don't even park in there. Mm. But the reason you don't park in there, punks, is because sometimes it might not be someone in a wheelchair. Sometimes it's an old lady. Yeah. yeah. Because my mum had one. But, um, you know, and for us with a wheelchair, if you don't have the parking, you've got to go, you've got to, it takes a, it's a little bit of a mission for us to to get the wheelchair, get the ramp down, to get the ramp down. And so you've got to walk a bit. So I just think, mate, do you know what you're doing That's when good. you're parking in a handicapped car park? Well, you've just made someone who's already got a mission, who's already... Well, they're not as lucky as you because you don't need a bloody wheelchair um, car park. Um, but you've just really put an extra hamper on someone, yeah. Yeah. whether it be someone who's got to bring their kid out of the car, get the ramp down, close the, you know, put the straps in. It's a mission. It, it's, it's, good. it's not a mission. It takes a little bit of yeah. time. It's not just undoing your seatbelt and getting out of the car. So... Why would you put that on? You can just yeah. walk down the road and use your fucking good legs to walk. Someone else has got to be pushed yeah, in a wheelchair. Yeah, yeah. And they don't think that. And sometimes I want to explain to them, but I just think, what happens if they say the wrong thing to me? <laughs> 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 Is it going to, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Have, so. You, caught, have you caught anyone like in the, in the handicap um, parking and you're there? Ah, uh, yeah. And they, they have a... Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I did, I mean, my, we were in Australia once and there was a group of kickboxers 
and we were right across the right across from this handicapped car park and this 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 guy he parked there and we were all because they know how i feel these kickboxes we all just gave the guy <laughs> the evil we were, our, 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 we just always so sour. Anyway, the guy turned around, got in his car, moved his car. We didn't even oh, say a thing oh, to him. Good, good. good on him. Good on him. Good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that looks yeah. like the ex champ. <laughs> oh, this, this, this nah, but you know, you are the worst, worst. It's you who don't, nothing's wrong with you, and you got that bloody. Um, the sticker, card, yeah. the, the card, and nothing's wrong with you. You went and borrowed it because you can't walk. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And if you got gout, that's not the same for you. Okay? <laughs> yeah. It's because you'll be eating the wrong food. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, the preacher, in, preacher, Jesus, man, it's funny, man. I can indulging, imagine. indulging in the wrong food, eh? Yeah. Brad, Brad, stop parking your van in these disabled car parks. <laughs> I can, I can, I can imagine that, Jason. If someone parks there, you can, like you're saying, man, if they say the wrong word, man, shucks. Yeah, honestly, so I, I, I honestly, yeah, I just shut my mouth sometimes, but I'm really pissed off, eh? One thing we, we forgot to mention was um, with all these different accolades, you even got a bachelor in yeah. education, or was it? Yeah. Bachelor yeah, in education. BA, yeah, you got a BA, oh, yeah, man. You guys are good, eh? Hey. BA, man. Uh, all right. This, you know, <laughs> man. You're, you're not just a fighter and good looks, you even <laughs> educated, hey? Yeah. Eh? Well, you know, um, it was important for my parents. Um, education was important. My dad used to say, I'll. Oh, I'll pay for your schooling um, as far as you want to go. And, um, you know, at first, before before I went on the scholarship, I wanted to be a lawyer. So I wanted to do law. Law is five five years. I went to Thailand in my seventh form and I learned Thai boxing. I was just like, oh, fuck law. I'm just going to go. I'm just going to go fighting. But I already told my parents I'm going to university. So what's the shortest degree? The shortest degree is a Bachelor of Arts. Um, and I was I was training, fighting, mate. I used to, I had a pad holder. Um, Greg, he used to hold pads for me in the squash courts and lunchtime. So I'd run about 10Ks, come down in the squash courts. He had hold pads for me because I'd, I'd just turned professional at university as well. I changed my degree from a five-year five year degree to a three-year degree. Got the Bachelor of Arts. Got the Bachelor of Arts. Gave it to my mum. My mum smiled. My uh, my mum. Uh, my, my, my my dad smiled, my mum cried, boom, I never seen that degree ever again. <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I just went fighting all the way, kickboxing all the way. But I done my goal, I done my mission, I told my prince I was gonna go to university. Yeah, I didn't do a five year degree, I did a three year degree. And you know what? I've been saying to my wife Freddy, I wonder where my degree is. <laughs> my degree. I wanna put my degree up on the wall at the gym, you know. But yeah, yeah, I've been, actually, I've been saying that for about three years now, but I haven't seen my, I never saw my degree again since the day I got it. I just gave it to my parents. My mum was so happy. She cried, put some ula fella on me. <laughs> <laughs> my dad smiled. My dad's pretty, like, reserved man. He smiled, so that was cool. But yeah, I never really, never really did anything with that degree. <laughs> Yeah. You you mentioned before, and it's probably not cool um, stuff you to bring up. I don't know if it was an old interview, but um, you also wanted to be a police officer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for about um, man, from I don't know about man, maybe ten years, I just thought as a police officer, I could help people. Mm. You know, um, yeah, and um, but um, my my dad took me out. He's like, "Oh, you're gonna be, you know, if you're a police officer, you're gonna judge all your friends. You're gonna have no friends." <laughs> and so then he kind of swayed me into um, into law because I want, you know, I thought I can help people, be a lawyer. And then uh, then I just found <laughs> kickboxing, and that was me all the way. And you know, I, I tell people that was. Your first love is your mum. Your love of your mum. Mm. But uh, that was my first real love before any girl that I loved was kickboxing. That was unconditional love. She gave me a hiding. I still can't. <laughs> 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 so that's the truth. That's the truth, man. Honestly, that's the truth. Honestly, it was my. I say to people, that's my first love. That was my first love, man. That's so cool. Um, I just loved it so much. It hurt, you know, even winning, sometimes winning hurt. And sometimes you lose and you think, fuck, what 
am I doing this for? And then four or five days later, I feel a little bit better. <laughs> oh, yeah, sweet. Let's go. Let's do it again. Yeah. Oh, and, and so what do you say to young people that um, uh, wanting to chase their dreams? Because um, it sounds like you fell in love with yours. Man, um, well, make sure that it's realistic. Mm. But fuck the world, man. Chase your dream and fucking don't give up and and don't let anyone knock you down. Don't let anyone knock you down. If you know, and you got to put the work in. You got to put yeah. the honest work in. You got to put the honest work in. Just keep going. Just keep going. And there's going to be little bumps in the road because the road ain't always straight and flat. There'll be little bumps, but just jump back on. Jump back on. Take that little bump, boom, make you stronger. Get back on and keep chasing. Man, um, I love it. That's what I say. And chase it with all your heart, all your might. And chase it properly. You know, there's no shortcuts. Man. You, you say it with so much conviction, um, yeah, Jason, man. Me. But what do you think? Because your, 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 your mental toughness... Uh, it is. It's just, it's just incredible. But what do you see in terms of our men nowadays? Do you see that same mental toughness or the resilience, regardless if it's um, kickboxing or whatever? Is do you see something like man, things are not 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 the same as it used to be, or is it just? What, what are your thoughts? Let me say this cleverly. Um, I think there, I think there is always tough people in the world. There was always dedicated people, but I think there's more excuses given to. Mm. Um, people today I don't know yeah, yeah that's it I think that there's always tough people there's those people that um, that there, there's always there's always there's always me in the world in my era in the next there's always someone there I haven't met him yet but there, <laughs> I haven't met him yet but there is but there is there's a Mike Tyson there's a Jason Suddy there's an Israel I don't sound, there's always going to be but I think um, there is there is a a bigger variety of things that can sidetrack you today um, than before. Um, yeah, I, 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 I'm gonna ask you a way of um, say you got the a man of today and he's trying to figure out life. I want you to motivate him, um, Cobra, Cobra Kai style, and then the Miyagi style. And that way you won't get in trouble for what you say. <laughs> um, what? So Pete... Um, so I'll be the... Um, you be... Um, Daniel's son. Dan yeah, this is Daniel's son. <laughs> well, you get what you give in life, motherfucker. <laughs> what you put in, you get out. You want to yeah. get fitter? Train harder. You want to get smarter? Study more. You want to get fatter? Eat more. You want to lose weight? Eat less. You get what you give. There's no two ways about it. What you put in, you get out. And if you want to get out the same amount as that guy, then put the same work in as that guy. You want to get more out of that, out of this than that guy? Then do more. If he's waking up at 7 o'clock, wake up at 5 o'clock. He's doing two trainings a day, do three trainings a day. Um, real, real simple. I want to go. I want to go now. It's real simple. Yeah, it's real simple. Um, you get what you give, but if you want to get more than that guy next to you, give more. Give more, and you'll get more. Um, Mr. Miyagi, it's all in the brain. It's all in the brain. Everything starts up here. You know, you can train your muscles, you can train your muscles, you can train your breathing, you can train your fitness, but you can train your brain as well. Um, and you got to talk to your brain every day. You got to talk to your brain every day because every day you talk to your brain, every day you test your brain, the stronger it gets, the more resilient it gets. Um, and that's one thing that, I, that I'm good at, training the brain. A beautiful, a beautiful. I'm better, man. You know what? 
I'm getting I usually get up at 8 o'clock I'm getting up at 7 o'clock tomorrow <laughs> you, know, yeah, yeah. you know honestly like honestly like I used to live in a gym okay I used to live in a gym I'd, I'd have work oh, honestly I'll wake up 3 o'clock in the morning just because no one else is doing it mm. because I can wake up at 10 o'clock in the morning and train because yeah. it's my gym but I just used to do things like that oh, I'd set my alarm 3 o'clock just wake up, come home, six o'clock. I just used to do out of it stuff like that, just because I thought, who else is doing it? Who else is doing it? I gotta make myself uncomfortable. I just gotta do something that that is not normal, so that I'm doing something different than my opponent. Um, yeah. Jeez, <laughs> I love it. Bro, I think man. I think we made stuff so complicated these days that like. Um, it's made men confused and yeah and so um just yeah. hearing you that's like cool, oh man that's, that's so cool, cool that was, that was cool it was, and you know uh, yeah well, i get to agree man because you're right obviously there's a lot of choices out there a lot of options mm. out there jason and i think a lot of people you hit it on the head like there's a lot of excuses oh i can't do this can't do that but when you really think about it you can't do it if you, you really can. push it yeah but you're right you said putting in the work ethic the, the hard work but I think some people might be afraid of of the, of the hard work, so they come up with, with excuses. But you, man, you just you don't shy away from that, um, man. You just just the mindset, the mindset, Jason. It's just incredible. Like, man, you said you do, you do things on purpose to make yourself uncomfortable. You gotta you gotta love hard work. You gotta love being uncomfortable, because uncomfortable, like uncomfortable, is one day gonna be your comfortable. Mm. The more you can make yourself uncomfortable, because fighting in the ring is actually it's uncomfortable for your body you you you're not supposed to put your body through pain through getting bashed up but the more you do it the more it becomes normal um and i and i just i like testing the brain i, I like i like i like playing games with my brain <laughs> i like testing them because i can't um fight physically anymore but i can still try and make my brain stronger it, even, <laughs> you know, for a lot of Islanders, the thought of hitting 50, oh man, I'm, my time is, you know, it's time to relax. Time but to relax. You're going, another, you, you keep on going to different levels and even what you're doing tomorrow, um, tomorrow morning with... Um, the sparring, yeah. How to sell, people, you, you, this is a celebration <laughs> for you. <laughs> but it's also like a challenge in mindset. 25 rounds, five rounds. 25 rounds, 50 minutes, 50 minutes, 50 minutes to celebrate 50 years. And, you know, in the back as well, um, in the back as well, uh, I've got a seven, I've got a seven year old daughter. Um, I think when she's 18, she's wise enough to choose for herself, her mm -hmm. boyfriend. <laughs> but before that, she might make a mistake. And I know he'll say, ah. Oh, I know who your dad was, he's Jason Suddy, uh, he's old man now. Yeah, I'm still going to be able to knock him over <laughs> if I have to. Yeah. You know, if he treated her wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. But when she's 18, she's old enough to, oh. make, to make the mistake, you know. Um, yeah, um, so that that's mm. that's in the back yeah. of my head as well. I've got to stay sharp for my baby girl. That's awesome. My eldest is, oh, both our mm. girls are 18. And, oh, man. That 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 thing of like um, she's old enough to make mistakes. Nah, nah, nah. nah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Forty, 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 forty. Thirty, thirty. So yeah, I get that, man. <laughs> That's so cool. Uh, it was, it's been a privilege, um, yeah. Jason. It has been, man. It's just so refreshing, Jason. I was I wasn't too sure what to expect them, Jason. But just just man, you are in terms of your just the mental toughness. I think a lot of men need to hear this in terms of preparing and like you're saying i think you're one of the very few that say hey i failed at this and not ashamed to, to kind of share because a lot of things i can't understand a lot of people oh i don't want to share that because it's kind of like a mile mile me yeah. but you for you sharing that say hey man and and the, i love it, the fact that it that it, during in the midst of the failure that all these other successes came out of it beyond um beyond the tokyo dome and, and the grand prix and all that look at what you're doing the, the kids you had your 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 uh, thank you. the rings um all the things that you're doing your ba all that well, that's that in itself, man. It's so much mm. more success than probably even achieving the K1, bro. Nah, you, thank you. Um, yeah, oh, oh, sorry, I'm just on that, um, you know, 
Uh, we've talked about the brain, having a strong brain. There's, I mean, I just like, I like it. But it's also, don't be so hard on yourself. Mm. You know, like, um, like and, and yeah. I, I said to myself too, don't be so hard on yourself. Sometimes have a break. Mm. Sometimes have a break. Cry, I'm okay to cry now. I mean, I, man, I, man, I go to kids' movies. And, you know, when I was young, growing up, maybe t <laughs> at least till I was, oh, well, no, I think 30, I'll never cry in a movie. I'm like, don't cry, don't cry, don't cry. <laughs> Mate, when I hit 30, I was like, it's okay to cry. I mean, I'll be in a movie and I'll look at my kids and I'll, I'll go, why aren't you crying? <laughs> Daddy's already crying. You know, you, how you cold person. <laughs> you you go, go hard and like, go. Yeah, I, I, like, I, I, I enjoy it. Yeah. I enjoy it being able to let my hair down and let my feelings out. It's okay. I mean, it took me a long time to do it. Uh, my wife taught me a lot. Mm. about letting my emotions out and that and it doesn't make you any less mm. of a man it's yeah. good you know it actually probably makes you a stronger man a bigger man because you've showed you've showed everything it doesn't yeah. make me weaker mm. you still fuck me around i'll still knock you over <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 you know what i mean but if i'm gonna cry about something i'm gonna cry yeah. it's okay it mm. doesn't change the person that i am took me a long time to learn that um, but um, I'm okay with it. I'm yeah. okay with it. I'm okay to give myself a break and not be so hard on myself either. That's cool. Gee, man, no love and thanks, Jace, for saying that because no coming from someone like you, that you know, that shows, um, ex that can express himself and show that type of vulnerability, it will mean a whole heap of wisdom for those um, listening into. No, cool. Thank you so much. And you know, just in terms of like just letting yourself be vulnerable and express yourself like through tears and that, like, does that bring a sense of freedom? Because some of us, man, we're taught to hold it in and it we does. Don't, but it does more damage to it you. feels good to let it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah. It does. It feels good and um there's no shame. That's cool. And you know what? When you do it, what you realize is the guy that you're probably you, your mate or whatever that you're trying to that you're trying to be tough about he actually doesn't mind he accepts mm -hmm. it and he probably thinks it's cool too mm -hmm. that that you could do it yeah yeah that's that cool man man my little love also my little love of so far man um jason when it's all said and done jason obviously you've you've had an illustrious career in terms of the, the fight game <coughs> Your ETK, uh, ETK and all King, King of the Rings and all these events are also, you know, we talked about, you know, we're all going to die. We're all going to die one day. And so, you know, when that time comes, what would you love to leave in terms of Jason Sutty? This is who he was. This is what he's going to leave behind in terms of the next generation. Most of your family. Gee. Gee. Um. Yeah, just that the 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 the, the kickboxing world um, that my kids will know that um, that 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 I did something that people will still talk of me nicely, um, and they were, that 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 my children um, my children will be proud of their daddy, and they'll be proud that um, he's not here, but people still talk about him nicely. That's about it. Man, man. <laughs> That's um, I, yeah, I, I'm really mindful that, you know, you got a massive day tomorrow. So I just want to, um, it's been an honour, man. Because, you know, for oh. us, you know, when your influences like Rambo and Bruce Lee, <laughs> John and, John Rambo. you know, things that we watch on TV and that really, you know, we um, sort of think that we're that person. Yeah. Um, at home, like we grew up getting to watch people like you, yeah. like someone that looked like us from our area, and and we get to sit with you and have this tell and know. And so it's, it's a real honor. But before I like wrap it up, can you tell us <laughs> that Rambo story that you shared before? Okay, okay. So it's, it's, Rambo, it's Rambo 3, right? <laughs> Remember Rambo, remember, remember Rambo three. Remember, and they've they've got him tied up, and they they they're cutting him, yeah. and they're slicing him, and he's just not even saying a thing. So there was this one time, at this um, 
I had this, uh, well, okay, so first, oh, I used to get my little brother, I used to get my little brother, like, I used to give him a stick, and I used to stand there, and I used to make him hit me, hit me with the stick, you know, be like Rambo, no, because <laughs> I'm trying to prepare for school, oh, wait, look, uh, yeah. my little brother was probably five, and I was ten, we were at Westmere Primary School, and then, um, and then I just, you know, okay, that was, that wasn't enough. I need to do something else. I need to get stronger for this guy that I want to beat up on Friday at school. And and he was tough and I was kind of scared of him. So then I'd just be real naughty for my mum. So my mum my, my would give me a hiding. But, you know, with Samoans, you have to really, the louder you scream, the faster she stops. Right? <laughs> yeah. The faster, the, if you really, I mean, because our parents are giving us a hiding because they care about us. They don't want us to be naughty. They don't want us to get run over. So anyway, I was just naughty, just naughty on purpose so that I could get a hiding. But she's giving me a hiding. My mum, my grandmother, my sister, my older brother, my little brother there. And I just didn't do anything, <laughs> didn't move, <laughs> didn't cry. And she kept hitting me harder, kept hitting me harder, kept hitting me harder. By the end of the hiding, because I'm Rambo, because I'm going to beat the guy. I'm Joe Rambo. My grandmother's crying, my older brother's crying, my older sister's crying, my little brother's crying, the whole family's crying. And my mom's so pissed off that she couldn't make me cry. Yeah, And that was just so that I could have a fight on Friday. That's my Rambo story. Thank you, Rambo. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut that's so cool. Mm. Oh, Thanks man. again, also. Just, nah. you wow. know, um, you t- talked about legacy and and you know how you want to be remembered by your kids, but um, man, you've contributed so much. I know that was your heart to be when you wanted to become a lawyer to contribute and serve, but your contribution to the community to the fight combat game, um, to New Zealand and, and everything that you're doing. And I know there'll be more ventures to come and, um, you know, giving the opportunity for other um, New Zealanders um, to dream or, and to pathway them into a dream is massive contribution. You're changing lives, you're changing families. So um, we thank you so much also for um, all that you've done, what you're doing and what you're about to do and our prayers for you and your family. And so we thank you so much also. It's been an honour. Charles, thank you. Brad, thank mm. you. Pete, thank you. Yeah, my all love also. It is, it is. Thanks for having me. It was fun. Yeah, bro, thanks for remembering my name, man. Yeah, man. Thank you, man. <laughs> Relax. Thank you, um, yeah. Jason. But yeah, it is. It is. It's a real honour. It's a real honour. We, um, obviously my father's passed away now, and um, but he was a big fan, effort fan. Oh, he, thank you. My dad used to watch. He's like, why, 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 why did he come in there? Why did he come in there? Or humble, or more. And this makes me feel good too, Pete. Yeah. Thank you. So, yeah. You know, this is, this is, this is um, what the fight game gave me to mm. uh, feel appreciated to know that your dad um, who's an old school someone uh, knew me yeah thank man. you but man thank you so much it's been a privilege real privilege also also uh, every guest that comes on we always give them a gift and so this is on on behalf of the mandate team we always do a bit of a caricature or a bit of a sketch cool. of uh, who our guests uh, we envision them to be so also this is for you thanks man can't hang it up next to your degree oh thank you very much <laughs> <laughs> thanks guys Awesome. Uh, thank you. Who drew this? Yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah, man. Thank you so much. Also. It's pretty good. Man, thank you. It's got a little bit of hair there. I've got the McDonald's sign. <laughs> 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 nah, thanks, no, guys. Thank you. Mad, all over. But also, is there someone that you can that you think would be ideal to come on the podcast? Anyone that you know that you would, man, this would be a good person to come on? Man, I don't know. Um, I mean, there's heaps of people, man. Get one of those UFC fighters out of here, man. <laughs> um, uh, Shane Cameron, good. Shane Cameron, oh, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Shane Cameron, he's a dude. David Tour, have you mm. had him on? No, 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 yet, no, no, yet. Yeah, no yet. We're trying to get the Uso, but he's a dude. Busy. Yeah. yeah, David. Um, yeah, um, I don't know. Yeah, cool. um, oh, you know. Oh, Look at me, all the people I gave you are all fighters. <laughs> I love fighters, you know. Um, but um, Shane Cameron's got a good story too, man. Cool. He's yeah. a he's a cool, down to earth guy. He's a fighter, you know. Um, he's just like us, but he's just 
Why? And he's like a Hori from, where is he <laughs> from? He's from the, the East Coast, I mm, think. The Matawari, yeah, 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 yeah you're right. Yeah. Mm. But he's got a good story. I, I, I enjoy my time with him. Tua, yeah. Israel, he's the man, yeah. <laughs> yeah, man, I love also. And we always give our guests the last words also. Any words of encouragement to our, our viewers, our listeners, our men also? Um, you get what you give in life, man. You you want to get, give something. Um, whether it be, um, whether it be giving to other people, whether it be giving to yourself, um, you get what you give, man. Yeah, I don't, I don't so please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. We look forward to your well thought out comments. And once again, Uso, Charles, Rafine, unlock, and take, take charge. charge. Thanks guys. Cool, man. Bending.